Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at the ratio test. We're going to scrap the root test here, um, just the ratio test. And we're going to let a uh, summation, and we're going to have a series of non-zero terms. We can't have any zeros in here because we're going to be doing some division. And we've got some rules here, and I want you to just think about the ratio test. We want to find out, does it behave, does the series behave like a geometric series? This is also going to be our test of choice for any time we have a factorial. Any time we have a factorial, we definitely want to use the ratio test. Does it behave like a geometric series? If it does, then we can use the same rules. Now, remember to find R in a geometric series. You can just divide any two consecutive terms. Like a geometric series would be like 1 half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth. And you can divide any two consecutive terms. This is like an n plus 1 term, and this is the nth term. And so you can divide the next one divided by the previous one, which is the same thing as 1 eighth times 4 over 1. That will give you your r. Now, I realize you could see that the r was 1 half here, but you take up the next term and divide it by the previous term. That gives you your r. And we know if that's less than 1, it's going to converge. So this is a convergent geometric series. So we're going to take this idea of taking the next term and dividing by the previous term, and we're going to extend it to things that aren't geometric. And if they behave like a geometric series, then they're going to converge. Uh, well, if they behave like a geometric series, they'll converge if your limit as n goes to infinity of your ratio is less than 1. This is very similar to your geometric series condition for convergence anyway. And it's going to diverge if your absolute value of this ratio is greater than 1. And, but if it equals 1, it's inconclusive, so you need to take a look at another test. It's not perfect anyway, so let me show you how we're going to do this. We've got a series here. We want to know if it converges or diverges. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify what is a sub n plus 1. That would be the next term. We're going to replace all of our n's with n plus 1. So that would be 2 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. And, of course, a sub n is just... 2 to the n over n factorial. So this was the next term, and this is the previous term. And so we're going to divide these two. And if we get a fraction that's less than 1, we're going to say converge. If we get a fraction greater than 1, we're going to say diverge. If it equals 1, well, we should have picked another test. So off we go. So we're going to do the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the next term, which was 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And then instead of doing divided by, I'm going to multiply times the reciprocal. So I'll just flip that thing on its head. n factorial over 2 to the n. Now, we're going to simplify this. And the way we're going to simplify this is I'm going to break these down into pieces until they start to simplify. I want you to recall that 2 to the n plus 1 is the same thing as 2 to the n times 2 to the first because of our properties of exponents. And also, that n plus 1 factorial means n plus 1 times the number underneath that, or 1 less than that, which would be n, times the number underneath that, which would be n minus 1, times the number that would be underneath that, dot, dot, dot. So watch what I do. I'm going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n times 2 to the first. I'm not going to write to the first. And then divided by n plus 1 times n factorial. n plus 1 times n factorial. n factorial takes care of everything underneath that. You see why I separated it like that? So that it can cancel that n factorial. And then over here on the second fraction, I've got n factorial over 2 to the n. And now we're going to see what cancels. These are fractions that are multiplying, so we have the right to cross-cancel. This 2 to the n will cancel that 2 to the n. This n factorial cancels that n factorial. And so I am left with the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 2 over n plus 1. And we've done this since pre -cal. It's asking for a horizontal asymptote. Is it top heavy, bottom heavy? Or do they match? Well, this is bottom heavy. I've got a consonant on top and a polynomial on the bottom. Bottom heavy approaches 0, which happens to be less than 1. Therefore, the series converges. Let's take a look at another example. 
So I don't have a factorial here, but I definitely don't know what kind of series this is. I can't use any of the other tests, geometric, telescopic, the other, other stuff. So let's try the ratio test. I'm going to identify what a sub n plus 1 would look like. That's going to be n plus 1 squared times 3 to the n plus 1 plus 1. I've just replaced that n with n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. And we already know what a sub n looks like, so I'm not going to write that down again. So we're going to do the next term divided by the previous term to see if it behaves like a geometric series. So I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1, which is n plus 1 squared times 3 to the n plus 2 divided by 2 to the n plus 1. And then we're, gonna, we're supposed to divide that by a sub n, so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal times 2 to the n over n squared times 3 to the n plus 1. So again, I'm going to break this apart so that I can simplify it and have the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 squared. You can multiply that out if you'd like, n squared plus 2n plus 1, but that's not necessary. And then times 3 to the n and then times 3 squared. Again, recall your powers of your uh, properties of exponents. If you're adding in the exponent, you are multiplying like bases. We'll do the same thing in the denominator. This is going to be 2 to the n times 2 to the first. And then we're going to multiply that times 2 to the n over n squared times 3 to the n times 3 to the first. Okay, so let's see what cancels. Um, I've got a 2 to the n down here and a 2 to the n up there. I've got a 3 to the n there and a 3 to the n there. I've got a 3 squared and a 3 to the first, so I'm going to take that 3 to the first off and scribble out that 2. And I don't think anything else cancels, so let's clean up and see what happens here. So I've got the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 times n plus 1 squared over 2 times n squared. And now we have to, again, try and find the horizontal asymptote. Is it top heavy, bottom heavy, or are they both equal? In this instance, I'll have an n squared on top and an n squared on bottom, so they're both equal. If you were to multiply this out, the coefficient of your n squared term would be a 3, and the coefficient of our n squared term in the denominator is a 2, so it's the ratio of the coefficients, and it's 3 halves, which is greater than 1. So this series diverges by the ratio test. All right, last example. We write out what a sub n plus 1 is. That's going to be n plus 1 plus 1 factorial over 3 to the n plus 1. And we already know what a sub n is. It's right here. So let's apply our ratio test. The limit as n approaches infinity. That's a weird infinity. Ah, that's better infinity of n plus 1 plus 1 factorial is n plus 2 factorial divided by, and I'm going to go ahead and separate this into 3 to the n times 3 to the first. Then we're going to multiply times the reciprocal, where again we're dividing the next term by the previous term. So I'm going to flip that over. I'll have n plus 1 factorial. And then we're going to see if we can simplify. Now I'm going to take a little side note over here. I'll, I'll do it down here, I guess. n plus 2 factorial means n plus 2 times the next number underneath that, which would be n plus 1, times the next num number underneath that, which is n, times n minus 1, times n minus 2, times dot, 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 all the way down until you get to 1. So I can rewrite n plus 2 factorial so that it cancels with n plus 1 factorial. n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. This is all going to equal, there's my n plus 1 factorial there. So I'm going to rewrite that as n plus 2 factorial, I'm sorry, n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial. So let's see how that looks. Wow, with my n. All right, so I've got n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial. The n plus 1 factorial takes care of all of those terms. I wrote it like that because I'm going to simplify or cancel with that n plus 1 factorial in the second fraction's denominator. 
over 3 to the n times 3, and then times 3 to the n over n plus 1 factorial. All right, so let's see what happens here. The n plus 1 factorials are going to cancel. My 3 to the n's are going to cancel. And so I am left with the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus 2 over 3. So now that we've simplified everything, is it top heavy? Is it bottom heavy? Are they both equal? Well, I've got a polynomial over a constant. This is top heavy. So this equals infinity. There is no limit. There's no horizontal asymptote. Infinity is slightly larger than 1, so this is going to diverge by the ratio test. Um, and again, we're, we're going to push aside the root test for now. And so that's it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.